Daily Wisdom. A very warm welcome again to all of you to today's edition of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. This time for which, you know, we're not going to have our regular quiz. So we have put our quiz masters out of job, at least temporarily. Uh, but then we will be trying out something different, uh, which would be a case study that we'll pick up. We'll pick up some relevant scenarios and uh, try to discuss over it and see uh, how how that can uh, we can look at that situation, whether it's directly applicable to us or someone we know or not. Regardless, these are scenarios that uh, you would typically come across or you would have seen, right? So those are the ones which we'll, we'll, we'll discuss and hopefully we can take away something from those kind of scenarios. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen and we will get underway by invoking the blessings of God and Guru. Are you able to see my screen? Okay, cool. Let me get started then with our opening prayers. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwar Ha. Guru Sakshat Par Brahma Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanur Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Radharade, good morning, good evening. A very warm welcome to all of you to today's edition of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. So today we will uh, get started. It's not going to be a Kahoot quiz today, like I had announced. So today we will be starting with a series that we are going to try out how that goes. Uh, we'll pick up some case study. And today I will be facilitating the session and I would love to hear from the participants today. So I take a back seat and I hear from you based on your learnings, your experience from Bhagavad Gita or otherwise, right? How would you tackle that kind of a situation? So it's like when we are able to put our thoughts together on certain kind of problems, our odds of implementing it, uh, something similar, it happens around our life, increase many folds as well, right? Because you're contemplating on that knowledge. So let's get started. I have picked a shloka um, to get that going. It's a beautiful shloka from Bhagavad Gita and I'll tell you why I have picked it up. So I'm going to recite it. We can pick up maybe three hands and then get started. Nahi jnani na sadrisham pavitram iha vidyate tat swayam yoga sansiddhah kalenatmani vindati Okay, three hands. Three. Who's that? Thank you, Palji. Okay, let's take two more hands. Radhe Radhe Shyamji, please go ahead. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Nahi jnane na sadrasham pavitra meha vidyate tat swayam yoga sansiddha kale natmani vindati Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Shyamji, thank you. One more hand. Radhe Radhe Pratusha ji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Nahi jnane na sadrasham Pavitra miha vidya tatsvayam yoga sam setaha kali natmani vindati. Radhe Radhe. 
Radha Radha, very nice. Thank you, Pratisha. So, this shloka, Lord Krishna is saying that in this world, there is nothing as purifying as divine knowledge. One who has attained purity of mind through prolonged practice of yoga receives such knowledge within the heart in due course of time. So, this shloka is basically nothing is as pure as divine knowledge. It's like, uh, I think there was a story I remember when we were growing up. That was not too long back ago, by the way. A spark neglected um, burns the house. It is a Leo Tolstoy story in which uh, there was a small spark in one of the neighborhoods, somebody's house, and it turned into a conflagration and pretty much turned down or burnt down the entire, uh, you know, entire village itself. In 1666, I think there was a fire that started in a baker's place, and it is called the Great Fire of London. It took down 13,200 houses, you know, in that fire, about 87 churches and about 436 acres of land in one shot. About 20% of or one-fifth of London, probably more than that, was wiped off in that fire. Now, of course, that is the potential of a small spark that can turn into a full-blown fire, conflagration, so to say. Now, on the spiritual side, that spark, if preserved, can actually burn down our karmas. It can burn down our ignorance pretty quickly. So the spiritual spark is very, very important. And this knowledge, if we can hang on to even a small bit of knowledge, Bhagavad Gita is so powerful. If even if you subscribe to one shloka, forget about one shloka, one line, even forget about that. One quarter of it, right? That itself is enough to, you know, make our life successful. It can become a full-blown configuration which can burn down our karmas and pretty much give us the purity of mind that we need. And as we gain the purity of mind, the divine knowledge is a natural consequence of it. That is the power of divine knowledge. Okay. So for every situation, every ambiguity, every dilemma, every uh, doubt that arises in our mind, Bhagavad Gita has answers to that. Okay, And that is what we will utilize through the course of our discussions in these sessions. Saturday sessions will be like put it to practice. We will take inspiration from scriptures, Bhagavad Gita, and see how some of the practical situations, scenarios where people struggle with and some complex use cases, scenarios, they do rise. How do we tackle that? And today's topic is going to be uh, pretty relevant, as we will see. Now, let me get started, not take a lot of time on this and get started on this topic. So this is the case study we will be, you know, picking up. Uh, and topic for today is, are we ever justifying in holding on to our anger and resentment? I think we spoke about it briefly about in the happiness, fulfillment, happiness and success series as well. And uh, or is it in our own benefit or to our own benefit? To let go and let God instead. Okay, there are situations that do happen. So let's get started. I don't know what where these two circles came from, but anyways, you know, when you miss out putting in animation and you just do the last minute work, this is what happens. So deriving pleasure from, you know, we all are looking for pleasure, we all are looking for happiness. Now there are different categories of people. People who like to help others, but not at their own expense. Me first, but I'll help. I'm not going to put myself at discomfort, but when it comes, I, I don't mind helping people, right? Now, this is not all encompassing, but for the sake of today's discussion, I'm just putting that, uh, you know, just to tee off today's conversation. Helping others, but not at their own expense. Then you have people who harm others, but not at their own expense. Then you have people they will helping others, even if it means at their own expense. They don't mind putting themselves at inconvenience, even if they have to help others. And then, interestingly, you have people who don't mind harming others, even if it means it's expense of harming themselves. Okay, so these are the two extremes, you know, these circles were there. So all four categories are there. So as you look at it, there's a little bit of, um, you know, gradation that is set automatically based on this now. It is like I said, uh, we can understand why there's a gradation right in this. So there are two ends of the spectrum here, you know, from negative to positive, if you look at it in a way. And uh, on one end, these are called saints. 
people who don't mind. In fact, saints and guru, uh, God and guru, every action, every motive for them is born out of compassion for others. Okay, they don't have none, they have no purpose for themselves to be fulfilled. They've already attained that perfect place. So every action that they would do is for others. And even if it adds their own experience, they don't mind to do that. People also do that. In fact, um, I won't say it is perfect, it is well-directed action, it can happen. Everybody has a different threshold when it comes to putting themselves at inconvenience for the sake of others. But we do have thresholds. But for saints, it doesn't matter. That is the only thing they can do because they have pretty much attained everything that they had to do. Right? Now, interestingly, who are these people who will harm others even if it is at the harm of harming ourselves? Our scriptures tell us they are called wicked people. Wicked people. Okay, That is how they go. Now, I'll tell you a quick story around it. There was uh, Brahmadat and Gurudat. Okay. So, both of them were big rivals, arch rivals of each other. Okay, Businessmen and they used to compete to thin nail on everything and pretty envious of each other as well. And uh, one day they decided, okay, let's take a shortcut to defeat the other. Let me do some bhakti, get a boon and decimate the other once and for all. Get a superior position or an advantage through a boon from Lord Shiva. He's Bhole Shankar anyways, right? Mahashivratri is coming. They said, let's worship Lord Shiv and get that. So this guy, Brahmadat, he goes to the Shiv temple and starts worship, worshipping there. And uh, the Guru Dat, not to be left behind, he, he came to know. He also said, okay, let me go do the same. He also, the other head started working and people would flock and see, my God, two big devotees here doing Lord Shiva's tapasya and they were like going on and on and on with austerities and everything until because they were pretty determined, right? You know what the motivation was for both of them. And they continued and people flocked. They were like, you know, we have never seen this, those kind of devotees and stuff like that. Anyways, their devotion fructified and Lord Shiva did manifest. Because Brahmadath had gone first, he manifested in front of him. But then when Lord Shiva manifested in front of him, he asked for a blank check, okay? Ask me, what do you want to ask? Now, Brahmadath thought, if I ask something and the Guru that ends up asking more than me, then again, purpose is not solved. So he says, you know what? What I'll ask is, give me double of whatever the other guy asks. That's all I want to ask. This Shiva Bhagavan said, all right, sure enough. He goes to Gurudath. He said, okay, tell me, what do you want? So he said, I know you went there first. Okay, so first tell me, what did he ask? Because I don't want to be left behind here. So he said, he's asked for whatever you ask. Give me double of it. So this guy says, make me half blind. Okay, done. Both of tapasyas are done. He becomes half blind. The other guy becomes full blind. And their tapasya is basically, that's all they got. So the point here is, it might sound a little absurd, but there will be people who don't mind harming themselves because their motive is to harm others. Okay? So with that, keeping that in mind, now let's move on and move on to our case study for the day. I have picked this up. Now, any references to anybody living or dead are purely coincidental, not at all intentional. I want to put that caveat here. Okay, I mean, they're of course inspired by certain events, but we can't really refer to. So this is a story of uh, Mr. Swabhiman and uh, Miss Apar Aparajita. Okay. Now let's see how the story goes. And I want you guys to participate and tell the solutions around it. Okay. I may facilitate moderate in between, but it's it's your you are the stars of the show today. Okay. I'm just going to be moderate. I may play a devil's advocate based on what you suggest and then see how the discussion unfolds. Okay. So this is how the story goes. There was a guy named Swabhiman. He came across a very like-minded girl called Aparajita. They both enjoyed each other's company and built an intimate relationship. Now, Aparajita made promises to Swabhiman, giving him a hope of happy end and a fulfilling life. It's not her, it's him, okay, by the way. That's a typo. A very happy and a fulfilling life. But we didn't know, right, how life unfolds. Things become a little tricky. So there was a twist in the story. Aparajita was married to someone else. Eventually, Aparajita decided not to continue his association with Swabhiman, her association with Swabhiman rather, and move on in her life. Hope you're following, okay, him, her kind of a deal. And move on in, in her life. Now, Swabhiman could not handle this rejection. Now, he became resentful. Super resentful. 
and he started seeking out opportunities to humiliate Aparajita publicly. We, we hear, right, there's so many incidents happen in India that some bad thing, you know, they throw a set and stuff like that, kind of a mindset. And the, basically, he started seeking out all the opportunities to humiliate Aparajita publicly because he was rejected. So much so that Swabhiman started developing hatred towards anyone and everyone who would interact with Aparajita, even casually or matter-of-factly. Now, this became a bit of an obsession to hate this person because that person rejected uh, him. Now, he was forceful and wanted everyone to join him in humiliating Aparajita. He continued to rally support as a victim in this whole episode. Hope you're following the story. Now, the Swabhiman had only one purpose in his life, to punish Aparajita for letting him down, since he had such high dreams with her. In this process, he did not mind hurting even his own well-wishers if they did not join him in spreading hatred for Aparajita or did not, um, you know, sympathize with them or try to drive sense into him that about time, you know, things are things. You have to move on. Now, his bitterness grew to such an extent that he started abusing his own mentors, supporters who genuinely wanted to help him. Now, Swabhiman willing, was willing to go even to hell to see a Parajita suffer. Okay, that is the state of the mind for Swabhiman. And if you put it simply, Swabhiman became a bull in a china shop. Okay, like everything that will come on the way is going to get destroyed from here on. Now, this scenario seemed somewhat like, somewhat like Amba's attitude towards Bhishma. If you remember in Mahabharat, she had angrily chosen vengeance over the blessings of Lord Shiva. I mean, she worshipped Lord Shiva, could have gotten anything, but ended up choosing vengeance as a price tag for the devotion or the worship that she had carried out. Now, what would be your advice for Swabhiman? Is his anger and ongoing frustration justified? What do you think is the path forward for Swabhiman? I would like to invite participants to talk about it and tell me your thought process. And I mean, I will give you in some moment to digest it. If you have any follow-up question, I, I can answer that related to this case study. But I would like to hear from participants, what do you think is going on here? And what would you advise Swabhiman here? And for that matter, it's not just one ended, right? For both, I would say. What would you recommend? Both for Swabhiman and Aparajita in this kind of a scenario. And keeping in context the Bhagavad Gita teachings, lessons, and everything that we have learned, heard so far. Let's start with Kumarji. Right, Kumarji. <clears throat> Jai Shri Ram, Jai Hanuman. I think with our knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, whatever we have till now, I think the answer is very clear, right? Uh, and Swamiji's teachings. Uh, we cannot harbor resentment and we cannot live with peace of mind. And that's what Swamiji's uh, reactions are. And the way he reacts to it, yes, uh, two things to it. One is there are good people, there are bad people. Sometimes we get bad people in our life who will teach us some lessons. So we need to learn from those lessons and then move forward. If, if we keep resentment and anger, as Swamiji himself has said, you are drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. You'll, so we will never have peace. And probably this uh, person is not even in the uh, near him, right? So she probably doesn't even feel his anger or something like that. So he's unnecessarily wasting his energy. He just needs to understand that there are certain things which happen uh, with, uh, he has to accept what God has given him in that situation. Uh, just move on, purify his mind, his love. He knows that there's only one true love and that's only to God. So concentrate on that and uh, get purified and lead a more happy and peaceful life. Thank you. Jai Shri Ram. Uh, Jai Shri Ram. Thank you, Kumarji. So basically, what I heard from you was the recommendation for Swabhiman is there's no point in harboring resentment and bitterness, right? And to move on because you are doing your damage for yourself and it's truly not going to help, right? Let go and move on in life uh, for your own sake. Is there any key point that you mentioned that I didn't, haven't spoken about? Let's hear from uh, Preeti Ji as well. Let's Preeti Ji. Let's hear from some new participants today and we'll come back to you, Sandhya. Chad, Preeti Ji, please go ahead. Yeah, so he is lacking divine knowledge like I used to. And so um, when you 
the deep down his ex his expectations were not met and mm -hmm. swamiji said when you expect things from other and they are not met you cre it creates anger and resentment in you mm -hmm. so uh, i would highly recommend him to join bhagavad gita classes at 9 pm <laughs> and also listen to Swamiji's lectures on YouTube and gain the divine knowledge. Once he has the right knowledge, his auto resentment will go away automatically. He's, it, all this is happening because he doesn't have the right knowledge in his intellect. And I used to be in the same boat. Like I used to get angry at this person and that person. And when I heard that the root cause is expectation, and I stop expecting from everybody and anybody anything and just stop judging and purified my intellect and my mind and my heart. Um, I changed internally completely. So I can re relate to that in my before self and after I met uh, with the divine knowledge. So... My recommendation is get the divine knowledge, the right knowledge in his intellect, and the rest will fall away on its own. Do you think the right knowledge, if, if it's truly activated in intellect, that, that is the cure for this problem that uh, Swabhiman is facing right now? He doesn't have the right knowledge. He doesn't have the divine knowledge. That's why he's resenting. His resentment is creating so much anger. An expectation from the other person is creating anger. The divine knowledge will give him that that's a root cause and there's a lot more to life and you should have purified heart and divine love in your heart. And once he has that with the right knowledge, obviously all that will fall off on its own. How about the bitter <laughs> bitterness to an extent where it spills over to pretty much every, not just limited to Aparajita alone, but spilling over to anyone and everyone who mm -hmm. not sympathize with him right. or not help spread that hatred mm -hmm. to message, you know, where he feels entitled and justified in the anger and frustration. How about that attitude? Where do you think that stems from? That comes from lack of knowledge. Like I said, it all comes from lack of divine knowledge. It all yeah. comes from um higher ego and uh like swamiji said when your mind gets attached to something and you don't get it it creates a lot of anger and if you do get it you get greed so he doesn't know how to uh, purify his heart intellect and how to divert the mind toward the right thought so that he feels good Right now, he is totally ignorant about the divine knowledge, about how the mind works. And that's why all this is happening. So my recommendation is um, listen to Swamiji's video, join Bhagavad Gita session, like I said, and that would solve the problem. <laughs> all right. No, fair enough. Thank you, Preeti. We'll try to uh, summarize this all together <clears throat> later. How about Aparajita's contribution to this whole problem? And how much, how much fault is at Aparajita at this point? Um, because Aparajita, of course, gave uh, Swabhiman hopes of a very fulfilling and a happy life, and then finally moved on, right? Quit out of that relationship, leaving him all on his own with those high hopes and expectations which were never fulfilled. What is that role? But let's hear from both sides as well, and then and see. Um, now, Abrajita has this apparently decided to move on, but the person who's suffering is Swabhiman here, right? So what would be your recommendation to Swabhiman and what do you, what role do you think Abrajita has in this situation and what would you recommend to both and from here on? Yes, Rahul, let's hear from you. Yeah, Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. I think for Swabhiman, the main thing is probably he already has the divine knowledge. But the one thing which is lacking is introspection. It is a classic case of having the energy, but then utilizing it in the wrong direction. So that is something I would say that introspect where my life is going in right now and what was the path which could have been chosen and right now where am I, am I heading? 
so that is something which has to be done because the only person who can help him is himself no matter whatever counseling everything can be done but then yeah at the end of the day the other person has to be receptive receptive and then try to make amends on that so let's that's so, interesting yeah interesting so i don't know i didn't want to interrupt you interesting point you brought in you said the only person who can help swabhiman is that person himself right now swabhiman's game plan seems to be spread hatred and see the other person getting finished i mean punished let's say hypothetically people start supporting rallying around swabhiman and start spreading hate uh, about the other person vilifying the other person where will that end will that really make this case any better for swabhiman or or you know will it make anything better for swabhiman at the end of it let's say the other person suffers also and everybody supports them in making this person suffer you think it will it will have a happy ending for uh, um swabhiman um, if even if that were to happen i don't think so there is a saying in hindi yeah like when you aag mein haath dalenge to aapka bhi haath jalega so same thing yeah if you want to like spread the hatred and all that definitely that negativity will first affect you and no matter what the other consequences are there that is a different matter but we have to think about ourselves yeah because that will also affect us and probably that can I mean that can change us completely and maybe our mindset can be completely changed and I mean yeah it can be devastating for us for sure yeah i don't know about the other consequences okay fair point okay. let's hear from jyoti ji jyoti ji you had raised and, your वर्क ऑन योर सेल्फ as opposed to putting your happiness as a function of 10 other things that other people have to do right okay fair point and jyoti you wanted to add something i saw jyoti ji's hand as well if you can raise again can unmute you jyoti sani ji yeah but in the meantime i can can i read a comment from the chat like there is a sure. comment also from priya ji sure so priya ji says we get a human life after so many rebirths swabhiman's inner world his mind emotions ego is impacting his karmas and prara similar for aprajita so introspection and seeking guidance from a spiritual guru can bring a change for both yeah very valid points but you think of the attitude or the mindset of swabhiman he is willing to go to hell to see aprajita suffer okay even if it means wasting a human life does not matter like ambadit only focuses like arjun's eye vengeance destroy the other person and anybody who will come on the way to stop that destruction or not be part of that um, you know vilification of the other person will be decimated you know not going to tolerate like bull in a china shop right that's why i had put him there so um, okay so jyoti ji please go ahead yeah radhe radhe jyoti ji radhe radhe um okay. this reminds me of the movie dar there uh, you know it was uh, i believe uh, shahrukh khan that uh, acted in a villainous role and uh, you know we all watched the movie with great uh, uh, attraction towards it with some sympathy towards the villain at the same time we um, somehow the, you know I, i don't know i i sort of understand where this guy is coming from because we all have these as much as we try to disengage from emotion and attachment we all have that expectation from each other but this guy seems to be taking it to another level where he is uh, believing um, uh, acting on the bodily level rather than on the atma level and he he is um, placing his identity to be the body um and he seems to be doing it on the yolo level where you only live once this is my saath jiyenge saath marenge and uh, you know aur kuch nahi hai duniya mein that sort of a, uh, behavior so i second preeti ji where she was saying that he needs to deepen his devotional knowledge but um beyond that he also needs to have self awareness of what he's doing and how it is impacting himself and others as well because on the physical level on the spiritual level everywhere he is coming out as the loser and 
sorry it just reminded me of that movie and it it was a great hit for some reason everybody was fascinated by that movie radhe 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 thank you jyoti ji i think great points you made which side of the spectrum this person is leaning towards so spirituality tells us basically to go up the ladder here right we need to end up on that spectrum helping others even if it means at our own expense that is the aspirational state for all of us and because of this behavior what is happening i think we should need to get to aparajita as well what is the role of aparajita in this whole thing and not just focus on swabhiman so maybe we can have a little bit of a balanced discussion around it but think of it from a spiritual standpoint where this person is heading you know in this trajectory one end is one end of the spectrum is the saints other is a wicked person right if you think about that it's a matter of uh, uh, you know introspection around which uh, category would you fall into if this harbor the sentiment is harbored for an extended period of time or that becomes a mindset right so anyways let's move on i see yes go ahead sandhya with ajit ji and then we'll come we'll go to abha ji as well um yeah so i actually also wanted to be a devil's advocate here Mm-hmm. and just trying to show another side of it so two points one do we know if aprajita was um, putting ghee in the fire when um, swabhiman had been doing all of this or whether aprajita had just been out of it right so that's one thing and secondly what if swabhiman thinks that um if swabhiman doesn't take any action towards this situation aprajita might go on and repeat the same story with some other individual and that could that could probably go on so what if swabhiman thinks that i have it in my hands to correct this person and improve the society in general oh kind of a robin hood for others yeah possibly it's a good but uh, thinking about human life uh... you they really think swabhiman can take it into his own hands to correct the rest of the world and the society and in the process uh, derailing their own journey and and building sanskars that are going to be um, really harmful not only in short term but medium and long term as well plus um, again banking on something to improve somebody rather than trying to focus on things that you can improve for yourself right so i think those factors probably need to be considered as well but yeah it's an open discussion let's hear from others as well i think you brought in some interesting perspectives there as well yes ajit ji you wanted to add something yeah radhe radhe mm-hmm. uh nitin ji this is a very practical situation happening nowadays everywhere so mm-hmm. this is a very good uh, example to take for the first time and uh, the apriza uh, aparajita's role was creating a spark breach of faith and you see the whenever there is a spark if it is a wood or paper it will fire immediately but or or gas petroleum gas sort of thing if it had been a other way around the water or some other material it will not catch fire easily so this is the part of uh, swabhiman's role first of all his name was wrong and he was not having any spiritual uh, knowledge so that he could able to control his anger and ego sort of thing so ignorance is not a excuse one should always have some knowledge if not he should have some guru mentor who can guide him he has closed that doors as well and he was not having any self confidence so just like a person having disease he should go to a doctor for the consultancy and solution doctor so, medical help yeah okay. so help ha huh, so what rahul ji was telling that he should have helped himself that is not possible i had experience whenever there is a sugar patient diabetes if it's his uh, sugar is getting low he is not able to visualize and mm-hmm. get knowledge of that so someone else has to help him that look your energy is getting down you are getting sleepy you, you take uh, immediately some rescue so yes. someone has to help him and aprajita part that 
she was confused actually she was not having uh, decision making role that who is the sat guru and who is the wrong guru so who is a true companion or who is the uh, not a companion so what uh, uh, the madam has told sanjay ji that he would repeat the same thing she would repeat repeat the same thing with other companion as well might possible so this is a nuisance for the society as well so on the two aspect solution is that win win situation had it been guided by the some mentor the swabhiman and he would have continued the friendship not belonging but as a uh, not a breakup sort of thing then probably he would have gone to a spiritual path and would have taken aprajita as well at by by virtue of attraction that he is having the true knowledge true faith and the right person he has to prove himself the right person as a true companion radhe 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 uh, ajit ji thank you for your great insights i think you brought in an interesting point that somebody would have to step in here right maybe a doctor or somebody right because a sugar patient who's high on who needs sugar dose periodically they would need some kind of an external help unless of course they 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 can take take the dose of devotion themselves and cure themselves right which is which which takes time or if they have already worked on themselves then they can reason it out with themselves right but other than that if it the situation is so drastic then maybe some external help could help in this case now spiritually speaking once we are let's say you are stuck in this kind of a situation what are the other concepts we can bring to the fore right we talk we have spoken about forgiveness we have spoken about tolerance we have spoken about letting go and letting god right if something doesn't happen probably it's how it's meant to be what are some of those principles or the knowledge that we can um, you know recommend is you know hoping somebody is soliciting it right so abhiman is soliciting it what are the other things that we can bring to the fore which could help in this situation right kind of knowledge right kind of concepts right kind of mindsets that can be practiced if you are stuck in this kind of a situation but let's continue with the discussion i see quite a few hands on this so let's hear from each one of us and then we'll try to conclude that and summarize this discussion um and uh, hopefully get some takeaways from it as well yes yes radhe radhe abha ji radhe radhe so couple of points here right one misery loves company right so if there are people listening or engaging in those conversations misery just loves company but those people haven't gotten to that point where they're going to disengage from gossip or you know we we haven't gotten there or developed that knowledge one of the things i mean personally i've seen the situation to a certain extent but at some point like someone just aditi just said someone needs to step in but i think it's important to bring these two people with a mediator in between and and ask for forgiveness right because at some point you have to forgive and swabiman or i can't pronounce the girl's name they both made a mistake they both one is continuing to make a mistake and the other whatever their situation is for whatever reason they went back right married and stayed whatever but it's also time to ask for forgiveness and forget right from both sides and who knows where their karma is coming from from previous lifetimes or so forth so i think it's important to bring them together to close the chapter but it has to be done with someone in the middle otherwise this this thing is going to go on and the female also has to ask i can't pronounce her name for whatever reason but she has to ask for forgiveness as well because somewhere you know you developed a hope and and that sparked something it it lit a fire right in that person maybe they couldn't handle rejection but when it comes to talking about educating people there are people who who go through this education all the time they they talk about it they talk about buddhism they talk about bhagavad gita but they can never act on it right one is knowledge and then the second part is act some people don't have it they'll, they'll just take and take and take but when you tell them to act they'll say they'll push you away right so if you try to even give that gyan to them or that knowledge 
you're going to push them away. So sometimes it's best to accept it, but also ask for forgiveness from inside, right? Like we always say, do your sadhana in and ask for that forgiveness for the female to especially to ask for forgiveness for whatever and however the situation is, who knows the whole details, but ask for that forgiveness because sometimes, you know, we tend to point fingers. This person is doing this, but we tend to, and I'm just playing devil's advocate, so please, um, please ask for forgiveness along the way because you don't know what you did previous lifetimes to to get here. But if you if someone is saying, go ahead and learn the knowledge and stuff, people know knowledge, all this thing we know, but when we're ready to act and accept, we will do it. When our like like you say in your lectures, right? Like or when you teach in your teachings, you know, we learn everything, but we don't want to do it, right? We, we why are we being careless, right? I think Anya Ji presented like, don't be careless, right? So I think ask for the forgiveness and and bring someone with a mediator. This person might not be able to move on no matter what you do. So all you can do is just ask for that forgiveness in your sadhana. It, it just would be my thought, you know? No, I think uh, you you spoke about some very um, deep stuff, you know, asking for forgiveness. And Aparajita also has a role to come and seek forgiveness in this whole episode, right? To douse the fire. Um, and then a role of a mediator, right? Like Ajit Ji brought in a role of some external person, you know, medical help and stuff like that. You brought in a role of a mediator here because leaving to its own, so Abhiman is not able to counter this particular situation, right? Or neutralize this situation. In fact, that bitterness is only increasing with time uh, with uh, nobody to look up to or nowhere to go. Now, let me thicken the plot to say that Swabhiman, you know, Swabhiman is spiritually invested and has a guru also and gotten guidance from guru also. It's not that Swabhiman is a no novice or a newbie to spirituality. Okay, so it's it's like Swabhiman's odds of winning quizzes are pretty high. If you give them a quiz to Swabhiman, they would probably show up at a pole position, not our cahoots I'm talking about in general. Okay, So they are pretty elevated when it comes to theoretical knowledge and they have the advantage. Um, Swabhiman and Aparijita both have the advantage of having a guru as well. Does that thicken the plot for you now? What is the missing link now? The knowledge is there. Guru is there. Mentorship is there. And still, you know, the, you know, that self-destruct path or having that bitterness is absolutely increasing unabated. Yes, Abhaji. Sorry, Abhaji wanted to add something. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's like I have people in my life, right? That if you ask them for knowledge, and I, I've gotten this guidance from you personally, you, they have so much knowledge. No matter what I say, no matter what I do, I know. Other, other. If you tell them, please act on it. Do, do. You know, don't get angry. I will only get it right. So sometimes it's like what we've done in past lives, what we're doing in this life. The only way to say is you're not accepting that gift, right? Yeah. I'm not going to accept your anger, but I am going to ask for forgiveness. Right, because I must have done something somewhere along the lines that I'm still getting this. So one is developing that tolerance. It's like your neighbor, right? You I, in one of the books, I think, or in, also in the teachings, you move from house to house to house because you have a bad neighbor, and every time it gets worse and worse and worse until you develop the tolerance to to yeah. deal with it. So that's that's where I would say is. For the, uh, for the female to especially ask for forgiveness in this case and bring in someone else. Sorry, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, thank you, Abhaji. Let's take a few more hands real quick um, because I know we are getting to the towards the end of the session now. Let's take a new face or a name. Let's, Sri Ramya, go ahead. Radhe Radhe, Sri Ramya Ji. Radhe Radhe, uh, first thing, uh, happy Shri Ratri uh, to all. It's started here. And uh, this one... Uh, I mean, this is a classic example of uh, looking for love in a wrong direction for both Swabhiman 
and uh, Aparajita. I think all of us uh, crave for love. All of us uh, crave for that attention or that love or whatever. It's uh, pretty much human nature. But uh, what I can, uh, uh, I I mean, I've not been in that serious situation, so I have no experience to come in. But for me, the little, little experience of bitterness that I have is, is work with the work politics or uh, when your boss is rude to you or when your co-worker tries to outsmart you uh, uh, in, in a cunning way or, or something like that. These are the small things in my life. But when I get bitter at this, I think, if, uh, I think that uh, uh, will Krishna be happy with me? Like when you love Krishna and I ask myself, uh, uh, okay, uh, am I in, uh, do I love Krishna? If I love Krishna and would he be happy with me if I have this bitterness? Uh, would he be happy with me if I am uh, angry? And when we have that true love for Krishna, right? Uh, we know that he is not going to be happy. And why would I do something which will not keep my Krishna happy? So I will like, okay, it's uh, not uh, worth it. This, I mean, this bitterness is, is you're weighing it with Krishna's love. It's not worth it. In one of the Bhagavad Gita Shloka, Krishna only, uh, he speaks of the, all the good qualities. And he says that I, I like humility. I like uh, gratitude. I, uh, I like forgiveness. All this quality are in such and, and they resonate with me. There's, there are two shlokas in which he could gives all these uh, good qualities. That was one of my favorite things. And I ask myself, is, is Krishna going to be happy? Will Krishna like me if I have this uh, bitterness in my heart? Will Krishna like me if I have this anger in my heart? And second thing is, this is a very, very uh, common scenario. If you see even across movie industries or celebrities or anywhere, one thing uh, which I heard long back, ages back was uh, uh, when uh, uh, Brad Pitt, uh, he uh, ditched his ex-wife uh, and then he went with a Angelina. I, uh, uh, I forgot the ex-wife's name, but what she told was, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, like uh, there could be something wrong in the relationship that he might have left like uh, that's the only perspective I should see it from. I'm, I may not be wrong at all, or I may, but I may be one person wrong. I may be two person wrong. I may be five person wrong. But she, I may not be like fifty percent wrong or something. I, I may just be four or five percent wrong. But she said, "This what is in my hands is I have to look at that five percent and I have to correct that five percent, you know, from for myself. That is the only way I am going to get out of it. So, uh, somewhere, uh, let's say that uh, I'll take another classic example. Let's say that uh, I got a bad rating at work. And uh, I may not be that bad, but I may not be that good either. There is some iota of truth in what is there. So for me to get out of this is I look for where I am going wrong, what I am doing wrong. It may not be completely true, but there could be some iota of truth. So from, uh, the only way for me to get uh, get out of uh, such things would be to, you know, look at my flaws and uh, have myself improved. Uh, I would uh, have better goals or, uh, or uh, you know, get better in terms of my work or okay. something. So we are our best uh, mentor, this I could say. Good to share. I, mean, I think your key message from it is we take control of our destiny as opposed to giving it in the hands of others, right? Only thing we have control over is what we can, what we can do on ourselves as opposed to trying to change the world or situations or circumstances around us because they are what they are. Great point. Thank you for sharing that, Sri Ramya. Pratusha, let's take Pratusha's hand. New hands, we haven't spoken, <coughs> and then we can go ahead, Pratusha. Um, Radhe, Radhe. Happy Mahashivatri to everyone. Okay, so uh, what I would I would like to say is three things. First is um, if they are my friends, okay, very thick friends. So individually also I will say if uh, uh, the guy is my friend, I and he has spiritual. Theoretical knowledge, then yes, you can do. Uh, theoretically, he he's well versed. Then I would tell him uh, about the attachment that you know to what you are getting attached. You're getting uh, attached to anger, and if you're ready to go to hell, so I will ask him. Keep contemplating that if this is you know giving you happiness. And truly, is there any happiness in it? You are making a mess out of yourself. So in that way, I will try to tell him, not, uh, not that you do this, that, but, you know, practical implications of going this way, that you will reach a phase where you will not be able to return. Now, still, you have time. You can do that. Second thing I would uh, recommend to him will be to do chanting. Because it has tremendous power. If you cannot, you know, if you have the very, very bad, any samskar, you can get rid of it. 
just by chanting start small but do it and if uh, because it's high time for him to you know the practical aspect has come he's done with his theory apply it because that will help him great point um and spiritual and uh, yes Sorry. and uh, to aprajita i would say she she has uh, come back to her life don't know whether she is trying you know with different different people but assuming that she is back she's realized you know this, there is no happiness that is what she was doing if she is my friend i would ask her to come to bhagavad gita class slowly imbibe the knowledge and then also side by side to the practical and become try to become a better person so that she understands what the implications of what she has done and maybe at a later point when she is convinced of it go and ask sorry because even if she goes and asks sorry it need not be like he will accept we don't know but that's a good recommendation she can try but she can wait and try then that will be you know from the heart that she is really and okay, uh, any will know that whether it's sincere or not great point pratisha aparadi certainly has some role to play in this one and and asking for forgiveness if it helps us assuage feelings on the other side then sure that right now this whole problem is gender agnostic right if you think about it it's a typical problem that can happen in relationships no no i don't think it would change your response right if i change the gender here hopefully it would right so anyways let's continue i can see a few more hands uh, madhu chanda ji please go ahead and we can hear from shilpa as well then maybe uh, how much 951 so we'll try to wrap it up by 955 so that we can do a bit of a chanting and then i'll summarize it basically and send it out with the key discussion notes that we had so that you know we have some takeaways from it uh, what we thought as a group um and then uh, hopefully um, you know uh, this may this uh, this this whole thing or the episode at it as it has panned out if we were ever to witness that we would have a better thought process around the mindset around on how to approach it as opposed to getting stuck in our hard stance that we typically have right around any situation or a circumstance okay uh, let's hear from shilpa or madhu chandra ji first we'll take two hands okay. and then we will go <laughs> chat radhe radhe everybody radhe radhe uh, so uh, like Uh, like you said that both have knowledge spiritual knowledge maybe they were not able to apply it or think about it so like many people said here rahul ji and everybody they have to dovetail the uh, that uh, devotion uh, the swabhiman that devotion uh, of love that they uh, he 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 can dovetail it to the love to god Mm -hmm. uh he can be said to do that he may not do that's different matter but as we are now uh, kind of thinking that they need to have a proper communication either by a mediator or by themselves or through a doctor or by self realization or introspection mm -hmm. communication is required they need to dovetail that love or that expectation from love towards divinity divine love then from bhagavad gita and many other such discussions we have learned at least they would have also learned uh, also that uh, situations happen uh, or mistakes can happen in life and they can happen uh, mostly for two reasons learn a lesson or teach a lesson your role can be anything so that ultimately leads to growth only that we have to understand that what is my role my prarabdh maybe in some life uh, somebody would be my best friend and now through that love that now he is feeling so maybe it is that uh, he, her earlier best friend is giving her uh, uh, had has given a gift by which he can dovetail that devotion to god now right that is uh, my understanding about how yeah, they could go uh, thank you that is the perfect um, perfect remedy actually if we can get to that stage of dovetailing everything towards god beautiful point madhu chandra ji if nothing at least i think 
we as a participants can certainly assume the role of relationship counselors marriage counselors and love counselors as well now i could imagine mm -hmm. they are all all great insights around this thing uh maybe one more hand we can take shilpa go ahead and then we can okay rahul is there as well real quick we can take that yes shilpa go ahead please great point madhushanda ji i'm just collecting that in my head i'm going to make notes and send it out because uh, we have some certain uh, recommendations key recommendations that i think as a consensus um, from multiple people or as a group i would say around what what should be uh, the mindset that swabhiman should have from here on and aparajita as well uh, including asking for forgiveness and you know some of the stuff mediation external help moving on letting go so i'll just summarize it and send it across as as the notes for this one yes shilpa go ahead please um radhe radhe everyone radhe radhe nitin ji sir radhe radhe shilpa i think um things change a little bit when when you said gender role reversals if swabhiman is a true friend he should ask what's going on with apar aparajita because for a married woman to seek another relationship with a man maybe her husband is abusive so that would be the first thing if i if i were a guy and say what's going on uh and and that might be stereotypical if the gen, if the roles are reversed whereas you know the female may not ask the the guy what's going on why are you going out of bounds uh so as a guy i think take the initiative and say what's going on are you unhappy are you being abused um why did you go why did you do this why did you lead me on and then take the responsibility to help her out so i think that might be slightly different um about about ajita i don't think it's up to him to teach her a lesson whether in vengeance or to correct her behavior because Bhagavad Gita says uh we should do our devotion and not look at others devotions so but whatever her reasoning is i think try to find out and maybe that will help him for his closure and his forgiveness a little bit and also if all else fails just accept the fact that he got conned this time around and then also accept like someone else said that this might be a lesson that ganhaji is trying to teach him and he doesn't know what else is coming his way so take a break for himself spend some time on his own introspective as some people said you know try something new do some seva sadhana satsang um to learn the lesson that he got from this maybe he actually there were maybe he doesn't recognize people and it's a it's a red flag for what else is to come in his life and to learn from whatever mistakes he made in judging the other person uh and for aparajita is if she went into it knowing full force why she's doing this and conning another person then why she did it if they both follow the guru a uh, guru then they both know it's wrong That's thank you all. for giving um, a very objective and a uh... a very balanced perspective on that shilpa i think that was pretty good so i think there's there are some takeaways for both of them to reflect upon and, and some actionable items as well that they could benefit from so thank you so much shilpa for that maybe the last hand rahul go ahead please yeah radhe radhe i think there are so many comments coming up in the chat so i have taken some screenshots maybe later i can send sure. to you sure and please fill out the feedback tracker if there is anything um you know you want to bring up we will of course anonymize it and bring some context around it put it in the feedback i have already we've already started building an inventory of it we'll have a good discussion around it and i'll try to improvise it and as go because i'll bring in more scriptural references for some of the top things that we are talking about you know uh, on those to deal with those particular situation direct references from bhagavad gita and scriptures as well uh, like we started off today's session with yes rahul please and there is a suggestion so there are multiple comments i might not be able to read everything so please feel free to add it in the feedback tracker i have tried to take some screenshots and ajit ji mentions that this is a suggestion that if this session can continue next week that would be great to get to re I mean, reconcile all the remedies and everything sure we can reconcile all the remedies sure i can spend some time part of it that and um, see how far we can go with the next topic on that right so that that's a good suggestion thank you for that Yes, Rahul. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Yeah. 
Cool. So let's do a quick round of chanting then. Thank you again for your invaluable insights and inputs and for your participation. I know we've just started off with this session. I would uh, love to see it morph into something, uh, you know, something big as we go along where we can really get into tackling, you know, the kind of intricate problems that life presents us and, and see what kind of insights we can generate from all the knowledge that we are gaining here. It's just the beginning. So I would really look forward to have some more engaging conversations down the line. So with that, let's move on to our devotional segment. We can mm -hmm. pick up three hands and then wrap up today's session. We have a bit of a break coming up. Hey, I wanted to let you know that from 10th March, the daylight saving, again, the sun's rotation or the axis tilt, okay, something is changing. So because of which we will have to wake up one hour early. That means for India, it will start at 7.30 a.m. in the morning when we meet next. That's going to be on 10th March, I believe. Yeah, 10th March. So 7.30 morning uh, for Dallas and US, you can adjust. It's going to be 9 central only. You can calculate it in ETC, PT and whatever it is. Okay. Yes, let's do this. Uh, just wanted to let you know, but you'll see that on the postings as well. Okay, let's take three hands and then wrap up today's session so that we can end it on time. Radhe Radhe Sandhya Ji. Go ahead. अद्वितीय एक तत्व है राधा तत्व प्रधान राधे राधे या को दो जो रूप है स्वयं कृष्ण भगवान राधे राधे जय राधे कृष्ण राधे 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 कृष्ण राधे या नाइस थैंक यू संध्या सो दिस इज आवर फर्स्ट वर्ड्स फ्रॉम भक्ति शतक एज वी स्टार्टेड दिस न्यू सीरीज सो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दैट लेट्स टेक टू मोर हैंड्स राधे राधे अनीता जी राधे अनीता जी या राधे राधे अद्वितीय एक तत्व है राधा तत्व प्रधान राधे राधे या को दू जो रूप है स्वयं कृष्ण भगवान राधे राधे Jai Radhe Radhe. Thank you so much, Radhe Radhe. Thank you so much, Anita Ji. All right, Riya Ji, go ahead, please. You are the third one today. If I get a chance, I'll do that as well. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Radhe Radhe. Happy Maharashtra to everyone. Radhe. Advati ek tatva hai. Radha Tattva Pradhan Radhe Radhe Ya Kodu Jo Roop Hai Swayam Krishna Bhagavan Radhe Radhe Jai Radhe Krishna Radhe 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 Krishna Radhe. Thank Very you. Nice. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. So I'll quickly explain the meaning of this verse. Um, so this is the very starting verse of Bhakti Shatak, which says um, that there's only one ultimate supreme entity. So people, um, you know, Radha Tattva, when it talks about, people think that Radha is different than Krishna. So this verse tackles this question head on right at the beginning itself. It says Adviti, it's only the one element. Supreme entity, Radha is its prominent aspect. The Supreme Lord Sri Krishna who descended upon the earth at the end of Dwapar is Radha's other inseparable form. So one is the Shakti, the other is the Shaktiman. It is like milk and whiteness. It's like sugar and sweetness. It's like water and wetness. They are inseparable. Both are same. So we should not have a discriminating intellect towards them that one is this one is another they are inseparable in Leela Jagat they take on forms and do all the Leela sometimes they meet sometimes they don't meet sometimes they marry sometimes one comes early sometimes the other one comes early all that is the Leela part of it 
but spiritually speaking both are inseparable from each other and that is essentially what this verse is saying so with that said i think we are doing good in two days 10 5 i see little arya as well good to see you arya radhe radhe and... radhe radhe she was singing with me <laughs> very nice so thank you everybody um we had promised to end it on time so 10 5 is not bad right given that we used to go till 10 30 35 so thank you again for your enthusiastic participation i look forward to seeing you on march uh, next sunday evening monday morning uh, which would be one hour early for india i want to reiterate that you'll see it in the messages as well so with that said happy mahashivratri to all of you and uh, take care stay blessed radhe radhe good night good day from my side thank you everyone thank you radhe 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 bye